What is up, everyone? It's time for the NFC East preview. Hunter Dolo here from InsideTheEagles.com. Sanjay George here from Philly Insider Podcast. And yeah, if you guys don't know, we do our season previews every year. And we didn't get to do all of them this year, but we had to do the NFC East. And I think it's time we go to those overall standings. It's time for the best aging part of this whole video, man. <laughs> all right, man. How do you want to do this? Do you want to go fourth, third, second, first, or do you want to go team by team, or what are you thinking? Let's go fourth, third, second, first. Let's do it like that so people get a picture where we're at. Give the record, by the way, for each place. All right. Let me just preface this. If you guys are watching this video and not the preview videos for each team, go watch those before you smash us for our predictions because we did try to be fair and, like, cover everything about the teams. But at the same time, I also want to say – I'm not confident in my prediction at all because I think all of these teams, I think, could end up finishing one through four. That's where I'm at with the NFC East this year. So, Sanjay, who do you got fourth? Man, my fourth place, I got the Cowboys. That's Let's go. right. Let's I did it. Go. That's right. I did Let's go. At six and 11, I have the Cowboys Woo. in fourth place. And, man, just to touch on one thing you said. Honestly, this segment is going to age terribly because, like you mentioned, <laughs> any one of these teams can be one through four. Whenever yeah. I assess my records for every team, I always like to mark out 50-50 games where I'm mostly nitpicking, and you could kind of have it go either way, to be quite honest. So I'm going to read out the 50-50 game numbers I have for each team. You ready? The Cowboys, I have eight 50-50 games. The Giants, I have 10 50-50 games. The Birds, I have 11 50-50 games. And Washington, I have 12 50-50 games. That's a lot, bro. There's so much flexibility between these records. But my call, the one I'm standing on, the take I'm giving, Cowboys, fourth, six and 11. Well, great minds think alike. I have the Cowboys at seven and 10 in fourth place. <laughs> Look, I don't feel confident in... That coming off the injury. I don't feel confident in Mike McCarthy. I just don't think – I think this is a team of wasted talent once again. I'm not denying the talent. The talent is there, and I think their ceiling is very high if they put it together. But, you know, I, I think they're going to finish last. I do. They just always find a way to underperform and let us down. So, especially you saw Dak on that shoulder injury a couple years ago against us. When his, and when his shoulder's bothering him, even when his shoulder's not bothering him, he limits the yards after catch for receivers because it's too far behind them. And they still catch the ball. It's still completion or it's too high. And, you know, it's going to go down as a good completion percentage, but missed opportunities with yards after catch. Yards after catch is largely a product of the quarterback. And, you know, there's, there's my little back bash for you Eagles fans in there. But, yeah, I've got them last. So going on to third place, Sanjay, who do you got here? I'm interested to hear this. All right, I got the Giants at third, man. I gave them the same record. They tied with the Cowboys at 6-11, and 11, but they did sweep Dang. the Cowboys in my predictions wow. throughout the season. So the Giants, at, even though they're 6-11 and 11 too, they sweep the Cowboys in the regular season, and they pick up third spot in the NFC East. My biggest issue when I was looking through for the Giants was just Daniel Jones, man. Do I trust him? Do I trust him to really fix the turnovers? And their offensive line, that's the other big issue, man. You know it's hard to win games with a bad offensive line. That is a tough thing to do. And even though the Giants' defense, I like them, I like Joe Judge, and they got weapons all around. Somebody's got to catch that snap, and somebody's got to throw that ball, and somebody's got to make sure it stays safe. And if that somebody is Daniel Jones, I think they're going 6-11. and 11. All right. Well, once again, Sanjay, great minds think alike. I've got the Giants tied with the Cowboys at 7-10. <laughs> oh my goodness so look again like you said even if daniel jones improves which i think he could again it just comes down to the offensive line for me and i'm not confident in them protecting him i think they're gonna have to keep some tight ends in there like kyle rudolph to help i think he got hurt actually but they're gonna have to keep some tight ends in there to help with the run blocking i think they're gonna run a lot of play action but you know what saquon has done with that offensive line testament to him as well but Again, I think it comes down to that. And, again, the Giants are also a team where they always find a way to, to disappoint as well. <laughs> you, you always know the Giants are going to disappoint. And I think those are big issues for them. And also, not to mention, like, I think something we, we kind of touched on in the preview with the Giants as well was those retirements 
you have to wonder if that's if that's a result of the culture there. And I, I, I personally am a fan of the culture there, but not every player is going to buy into that and the way they do things. That's just a fact. So not every player is built like that. And, uh, you know, while the NFL is, a, you know, a lot of tough guys, there's also a lot of spoiled brats and babies that are in the league as well that, you know, they're, they're going to, they're not really going to going to, they're not really going to want to play or practice like a high school team does uh, in that sense. So, you know, Joe Judge literally had to beat reporters doing push-ups this camp. So, yeah. Going on to second place. All right, second Sanjay, we've place. got two teams left. We've got two teams left. Second should we place. Say, should we say it at the same, same time? We'll say it at the same time. Ready? Right. On three. three. One, two. Oh, you froze. Three. Wow, that was Washington that was, football team, my man. That was really uh, unoffensive. That was really uneventful. Or that was a uh, that was very anticlimactic. But I also have the Washington football team at third. <laughs> oh my goodness! Of course, I had to freeze right then at that exact moment. <laughs> I know. But, yeah, dude, I don't know what your record is, but I have them at eight and nine. My biggest thing just being their schedule. To be quite honest, if you ask me, top to bottom roster wise, the football team is arguably the best in our division, but their schedule is rough, man. The NFL decided to hand them a tough one this yeah. year. And again, I just, by this point, we know what Ryan Fitzpatrick is. He is sky high and he's six feet under sometimes. And I just have faith that while some games he'll pull him out of the clutch, he'll make incredible throws with his eyes closed backwards, spinning around. There will also be games where he's turning the ball over, making terrible decisions and missing receivers. So, you know, it is what it is. Otherwise, there's really not many questions with the Washington football team. But I like Rivera. I like the rest of their roster. I like their playmakers. I love, I love their defense. But I just got belief that Fitzmagic will win him a good number of games and he'll lose them a good number of games. Yeah, good point. Yeah, like you said, I have full confidence in the coaching staff. The roster is very well-rounded, but comes down to the beard. He he does have the Eagles number, you know, with the Bucks and the Dolphins. <laughs> Not going to talk about those games, but did beat us both times. But at the same time, that's a guy who just consistency is not there for him. And like you said, that risk-taking mentality does not always pay off the way he would like it to. And there's going to be some other games – yeah, the schedule is a big thing. And I think going on Fitzpatrick, too, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple games where at the end of the game they just put Heineke in because they're like, look, Fitzpatrick is just not getting the job done. I think I still think Fitzpatrick can start most of the games, but it's a concern for sure. And I think the linebacker position is young, similar to ours, but also a concern there. So, look, I'm going with them at 9-8. and eight. That's the prediction I have in Matt. I just think the schedule is really, really tough, and that's what it comes down to. And I don't trust this magic to push them over the top. So, well, well, well. First place team, the NFC East champs of 2021. I should also mention there has been no repeat champion since the 2003-2004 Eagles. So, that pretty much rules Washington out this year. <laughs> with that said, the Eagles are going to finish in first place and win this division because uh, it sucks i have them tied with washington at nine and eight as well so i have them winning the division again i think this offense is going to be a well-oiled machine under sirianni with the speed we have there the overall talent the health of the o-line this year and i think the i should say poise of jalen hurts i think that's a big thing for me and i think jonathan gannon is going to keep teams off balance I think it's going to be very similar to when Chip Kelly came in here with a new system and took the Eagles to the playoffs in his first season. So I'm excited. There's a lot of winnable games for us. I think we have the, at least going into the season, things are going to change, obviously, but I think we have the most manageable schedule out of all the four teams in the division. Agree. Just at a glance, the, our schedule is definitely the most manageable. To give my record, I also have the Eagles finishing first, and I also have them at nine and eight. Exactly. Nice. We stayed very close with these record predictions. We did. But I just think, like you mentioned, the manageable schedule is the, probably the biggest factor for me. I was surprised by the amount of wins. I was. I honestly, before I started looking through and doing my research, I had the Eagles just guesstimated in my head at around six to seven wins. So I was yeah. pleasantly mm -hmm. surprised to spot them an extra two, three in some games. Now, mind you, 
I think a few are going to be heartbreakers. In fact, I think mm. most of the losses are going to be heartbreakers this year, and most of the wins are going to be close shaves. I don't think there's going to be any really big blowouts this year for us. I think we might get blown out in a few games, but I think for the most part, it's all going to be close games the year through. The young team, I think they'll make some incredible plays, and I think they will break some hearts this year. I just think that's inevitable. I'm curious to see how the coaching staff comes through this. I'm curious to see how the young talent performs throughout all this. But I do have the Eagles winning the NFC East at 9-8, and eight, man. All right, two questions for you, man. How far do the Eagles go in the playoffs in your scenario? You know, I know we didn't play it out, but just off, off the top of your head. And do any other teams in the division get a wild card spot? I guess that would only really be Washington for you and for me as well. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, I think the NFC is going to take a little bit of a jump as a whole this year. Honestly, you could argue that, honestly, three wild cards will come out of the NFC West. That is a real yeah, argument yeah. this year, that all three wild cards could just be the NFC West. So, you know, I don't really think a wild card is coming out of this division. I don't think it's possible. And I'll say this. It's going to be pessimistic because I know it will be a home game. But I have a hard time seeing us getting out of the wild card round. I do. I just don't think this team – you want to argue they'll win the division with some close games, pull some wins out in the clutch. That's fine. But in the playoffs, it is a lot about experience. The game changes. Refs swallow their whistles a bit. Things get more physical. Things require a lot more experience. You got to know what you're doing. You got to have guys you trust in those moments. And unfortunately, I don't think our guys have enough experience to do that yet. I just don't think they do. So I'll say the ceiling really is just making the playoffs, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think they win a playoff game this year. I hope they do. And I think that the fact, like you said, it will be a home game. They're going to they're gonna fight. And they are going to – it's going to be another close game. But I think it could be a heartbreaker. I think they will have opportunities to win the game. But I don't think they're going to be able to close it out. And I personally do think, for my second question, I do think Washington could get a wild card spot. Again, the wild card in the NFC was weak last year. While the West was really good, you know, the Cardinals kind of fell off at the end of the year. I'm not saying they're going to specifically, but you never know with the West. Maybe some one of those teams underperforms. So I am going to say Washington, I don't want to say they will get a wild card spot, but I think they can. I, I'll agree with you that three three NFC West teams get, uh, make a playoff uh, or make the playoffs this year, but I don't think Washington gets a spot. So, man, with that said, if you guys haven't, I mean, this was a whole long recording of the – four NFC East team previews in addition to this video, which was a standing. So go check that out if you guys haven't. And thank you guys for all the support. Football season is going to be awesome on this channel. And we have our first preview of the season with Aaron Freeman, Falcons writer. We're going to have him on, talk some Eagles Falcons this upcoming week. It's going to be great to be doing a preview again after we covered our first season last year together. Me and Sanjay did pretty much every preview every week together and every post game as well. So look, we're going to be here, uh, you know, good, bad, ugly, whatever it is, we're going to be covering it. I mean, I don't think we can, we can only go up from last year, Sanjay. That was a horrific sure. season to cover. My bias has gotten the way with Carson Wentz and it was just, a, it was a tough season to cover. So this season, I think it's just going to be nice to have a refreshing start. I don't really have too many biases on the team. I have guys I like, but I'm not afraid to criticize them at this point. And, yeah, I just think I have a fresh perspective, and I'm just excited to cover another Eagles season with you and NFL as a whole. I'm excited. Hey, man, like you said, loved covering the birds, seeing the fan interaction especially. You guys were great during football season last year. Yeah. Come through again this year. I know we got a lot of new subscribers. Come through. Come join us for the previews. Join us for the post games, the tears, the happiness, the sadness. Those post games are really something, man. Yeah. But just come through. Join out. Come show out with us. We'll have a good time. Yeah. Facts. And, hey, you never know. When, when, if I'm, when I'm home for breaks and such, me and Sanjay might be doing some live stuff pregame and all that. So you always got to keep your eye out for that stuff. And we'll try to record some reactions this year. I know, you know, you guys have never seen me during an Eagles game. That's uh, – I won't, I won't spoil anything. But, I mean, you've seen my Phillies and Sixers reactions – that's that's not even close to the level I get. I and mean, even my Devontae Smith reaction, I wouldn't say is near my full energy level for an Eagles game. So, and I that. like to think that my, my hype is uh, is contagious when I have Sanjay or Dan over. Not that they don't get hype, but 
I, I think I bring out a little bit more than you guys. So. You're right. You raise the energy in the room a bit. I won't lie. Most of y'all who watch but, Hunter are probably like, he's a relatively calm guy. You yeah, ain't seen it. You ain't seen it, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting ready to send out the uh, pre-apology text to my roommates for what's about to go down this Sunday. But, hey, enough with that talk. I'm excited. I could talk forever about that. Go birds. Fly, go fly. Run, baby, run. Didn't do that in order at all. But I'm excited. Sanjay, anything you want to say? As always, God bless you all. Have a good one. All right. Peace out, y'all. Go Birds.